Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We're talking about the wireless Linksys access points. Um, I've had these installed for two weeks so far. We've only got three rolled out, got one more to install, and then we can then we completely changed over. So we're all on these Lix, uh, Linksys access points. And these are so far, so far the testing I've done so far, which is very much just general use, really well. No problems with um, devices disconnecting from it and no problems with actually weak signals. This is absolutely brilliant. So I'm so so chuffed for these so far. I'm not chuffed because they sent them to me to test out. I'm chuffed because they are really good from what I can see. And they've asked me to sell this as a business solution to businesses out there that are watching, but I think these are great for in, in the home. Because the thing I'm having at the moment with um, parents, talking to parents and stuff, restricting kids off the internet, giving them literally um, restricted time is very difficult because th general broadbands don't give you that it's either they're on or they're off you can't seem to schedule a time period with it which is difficult but using these while it links these access points you can do policies that can do that for you which is really good these are not cheap these are like 186 pounds off amazon around about that sort of price um they're a bit more expensive but you get the policy on them so you can configure them to sort of say so many devices can have access at a certain period of time some can't but we're going to cover more of that in an additional video on that side but these are brilliant so far and you can also load balance the ports so you can actually have two network point connections going into there into your switch look make sure one's poe so you don't have to worry about the power supply for it and that way you can get two gig of speed uh, from each one of these um, hub um, access points which is really really good um, so, so far I've installed them a single um, cables at the moment, so they've got one access back to the switch uh, that we're running on the Linksys PoE switch we've got. I've got one installed on my flat here as well, because I really want to show the, the, ma the uh, cloud management software, which is absolutely brilliant. It's so easy to install, it's so easy to get these up online as well, which is today's video is all about. We're going to actually go and show you the management software, give you a look at an overview of it, and how easy it is to just add this in to your cloud uh, management software, how easy it is to add them in there. And that way that you can access that from anywhere. So you, you can be around a mate's house, um, or you can be around a friend's house, or you could be on holiday somewhere, and, and the company rings up, oh, and it, your customer, it, their access point's gone down, or they can't do it, or they can't reboot it. Can you have a look at it? You can just connect straight in, have a look at what's going on and stuff, see whether they're online or offline. I've, ma I've mapped all my MAC addresses on the network to all the devices I know and who belong, they belong to. So later on I'm going to configure it with some of these policies that will restrict certain devices on the wireless access points, certain off, and give them sort of time restriction. And because I've got the Linksys Access PoE switch that comes with this, I can also restrict the wireless connections. So for things like PCs that's hardwired in, game consoles that are hardwired in, I can also put policy restrictions on those through the switch as well, which we'll do on another video itself. But today we're going to talk about the um, iCloud management software, which is a brilliant bit of kit. I've played with some interfaces, but this is this is the, the bee's knees, and uh, very much it's a very much I think it's a second version. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but it's it's really great. There's lots of scope for adding uh, more tools to it as well. But from right out of the box, it's brilliant and easy to use. You don't need a, a degree in it. <laughs> it's brilliant. So let's have a, let's have a look at the uh, manager interface, and we'll take over a very basic install. So this one's video is all about just adding an access point. How easy it is to do that and how easy it's to re uh, rename devices uh, on your wireless network. So if you haven't already created your account, click on uh, register. They'll ask you to go through some details here and follow it on screen. It'll also probably ask you to set up a, a domain as well. Um, so I'll show you on my one, if I click on login now. Um, I call mine jacksnetwork.linksys.com, so you can use that as your reference to go back so it's easy to remember which is quite nice actually from uh, links is doing that so it's easy to remember so you can do your company name if you wanted to uh, and then then obviously then I, I, you log, log in with your details which I'll do that so once you're logged in book has already been playing with this because I, was, I, I, I wanted to play with it before I, I teach people how to use it so um, so basically when you first start it this will be blank because you have, you have no networks in here so what you do is click on new network, type it in. So this one I'm going to do this as my home uh, location. So we're going to do this as um, Oldine. Well, actually, I'm going to do this as Oldine hyphen flat. So I know it's my flat. I'm going to give it a little house, or actually give it a building or something like that. Okay. So references a flat. Click next. 
So in there you would put in your location you are at, so or the location where these access points can be installed. Because you might be an IT company that are rolling these access points out for all your clients, or you could be an IT company rolling out for multiple offices that you have, or you could be literally running in an office actually deploying these. Uh, or you might be in a hotel. Uh, again, you need to manage your hotel access points. So you might be run, looking after one or more one, one or more hotel. So I would set that up as your hotel hotel location. So first of all, so links this um, hub access point. Remember to look at the back of the uh, label on the back of the access point for its serial number and MAC address. Have that written down. So so go um, so it saves you. Um, Going to have to run to go and get it. So before you deploy these out and install these on the wall, pre-configure these first. Or if you've already got them installed on the wall, remember to take a picture of the access points, the location, and also label the access points so you know which one they are. So if they go 40, you know which one to take down as well. So add a new access point straight for, nice and easy as that. So we need the MAC address. So we'll type in the MAC address for this one. So I think it's 30, 23, 03. Four seven F four C four, and then you need the serial number. I think that's right. Hopefully, it's right. Click next, and add it in. As simple as that. Then from here, you can actually add. You can name the access point. So if you label these up as numbers. Or you lay them up so you know how to recognize them. Type the, la the label in itself so it's easy to reference that when you do searching f search within your database. Because if you've got lots of access points being installed throughout your buildings or hotels, it, it can be it can be quite um, hard work finding which ones which unless you've got them labeled up. So I'm, I'm just going to call this um, hallway because that's where it's located. Uh, hallway. Nope. AP, click add access point. And it tells you the firmware as well, it's quite good detail. So, there you go, this is my first one set up. Um, I can now click on it, go into a bit more details in here. So, you look at the details, uh, connect to the cloud, MAC address, serial numbers, vendor, all those details. Chat firmware version, we can click on that, see if it's got a, a latest firmware, which I always do. And you can always come back later on and look at these firmwares, check if they need upgrading, you can do it off the fly, which is really nice as well. Uh, wireless access slots, so here it gives you wireless access slots, so these ones here are not being created. So if you've got different hubs on different locations, when you install these on different um, like locations here, it will ask you to recreate the wireless slots itself. But if you install these on the same um, site as the last ones, you, you just literally click on add wireless and you can add those in itself but here because if we haven't got that we're going to have to create that from the start so we can click on create new wireless you can access that from the menu as well so we're going to create um, two on here so cloud one two three we're going to put a password for this one actually I can't remember which one I said to I guess okay I'm going to click create and we're going to set up a second one as well, which my kids use. So that way they don't say saying to dad when they come to my flat, um, what's your what's your Wi-Fi password? <laughs> By keeping the same as the as the other location, that way you don't have to have lots of manage you don't have to manage lots of passwords. So if you've got multiple companies and you've got, you got staff that go from one building to another building, then it's easy to have the same. Uh, SSIDs and passwords the same. It makes your life easier. Um, that's what I do with my kids. So here's my flat is miles away from uh, their house or office ones we have been referencing it. So that way I can keep it to keep it the same. So once you've done that, you also need to go into the settings on each one. You need to change the bandwidth level. Otherwise, it limits the Wi-Fi speed, and and select leave the default as unlimited. So you can restrict that bandwidth if you wanted to. You can say each one will have so much bam bandwidth. We can give them full, full, that's why I do full unlimited. Always oh, won't get any access across that when they connect to it. <laughs> and save and then click next. And then on the Wallace one, which is my which my kids access, I want them to be full access, but I also want to click on advance and say client isolation, which basically means they can't see any other device on the network when they connect to it. 
and you can actually you can also specify on a wireless SSID how many clients can connect to it so you can restrict you can restrict it on how many clients connect using the SSID uh, or not which is quite a good a useful to have so there you go so there's one's connected in there go back to my access point now I can now click on back on it again and then click on wireless slots and, and oh, they go, I've added it in for me but not normally you can click on it and it add it in so it sometimes especially you're adding a new one from another profile so we delete this slot from for instance um, delete on. let's say you've just put a new one on for your other network that's already been connected up it will show you this and you just click on wireless access point and it will show you the SIDs to add in which you can click through but it's actually deleted it now <laughs> why did I say deleted it <laughs> Oh, they're there. They actually are there. So access points. So why is it allowing me to add it in now? Ax. Ah, there you go. Click add. Then you go back to it. Add. So that's what happens when you just install a second one on the same network. It'll allow you to add those in. You can add up. You can add up quite a few in there as well. So you can add a guest one if you wanted to. And with the guest one, you can restrict it on speed so they don't get the full speed uh, of the of the wireless access points. Uh, but for the moment, keep it simple. So that's how easy it is to add it into there. This gives you TCP information, so you know it's um, got a DHCP address, it's got a subnet mask, it's got a DNS server, and also it's got an, uh, an IP address. So you can configure these individually if you wanted to, but it's easy to use cloud management software for that. Radio um, details, I don't need to touch any of those. Tools, so you can ping from the access point out to the network, so you can see what, so that's a great way of diagnosing issues where it doesn't connect to the internet for some reason you can turn the you can actually blink the LEDs so it's a good way of finding where they are so just in case your guys there's a 41 which one is it well I'll blink the lights for you you can go and find it much more easier that way um, if you haven't got them labeled up correctly <laughs> yeah, otherwise we got label click correctly then um, that way you need to then uh, it gives you time zone information so obviously it's using the internet for time keeping it up to date Remote, and you can talk. There's so much you can do on this. You can enable the lights on the access points, or you can turn them off if you want to. It's always great having them on because if you go around, you can visually see whether that is actually powered on or not. Um, so yeah, so there we go now back to all networks. And now I've got my new um, Olding flat added to it. It's got uh, against my other locations, so three locations here. So that's Office One, Office Two, and my flat in theory, Office Three. <laughs> there you go one access point and now hopefully I should be able to now connect to it using my phone so we're going to quickly browse for that and we're going to quickly connect to it I think I've got the passwords correct as well and it should connect to it two six I'm just typing it in And yeah, we joined it, so we know now we've got a connection to it. Job done. So that's just very basic of set set an access point on there, set an SSID IDs onto it, uh, as simple as that. So it's a really nice interface, and you can get all sorts of statistics from this. So we we'll do another video on overview of the cloud management software, what sort of information you can get from it, and things like that. So this is just very basic, showing you how to um, connect an access point, and here's all the ones that are connected. In different locations it's great because it also shows you which one's connected to which which SSID um, and obviously what, what hub they're connected to so you can see them roaming around so in theory you could probably even track your staff knowing where they are in the building <laughs> quite quite good as long as they go past an access point you know in that you're in that rough area of that access point which is quite cool um, uh, way of uh, showing it and stuff like that so yeah fantastic piece, piece of uh, software so um, yeah brilliant that's how easy it is to use, a really nice bit of kit, it's really the work well designed. It's not too difficult, it doesn't have too many advanced features and it doesn't have too many, many options. It's just got the right bits you need right there to use and it's quite simple to install uh, your access points. And I love about these access points, you don't need to prep them, you just literally add the MAC address in, serial number, adds it in there. So it's easy to replace them as well, so if you go 40, but it's great, um, you can access it from actually anywhere in the world, you can remote and manage your hubs, your access points. And it's a great way to roll these out for all your clients uh, or if you're a business that's got multiple sites, get them rolled out everywhere so that your IT people can manage these 
much more simpler, make their life easy uh, itself anyway. So any anyway, more any questions on these um, about these wireless access points? Please do leave a message below, and uh, if I can't answer those questions, I got full backing from support by Linksys. I can get them to answer them and get that relay back to you as well as quickly as we can. So more videos like this coming up very soon. Uh, I was going to do like eight videos on the wireless access points and the switches that's been given to me by Link, uh, um, Linksys. But I think we're going to do a, quick, a few more videos coming out of this because there's so much I'm learning from the different products. And the PoE switch I thought was just a standard PoE switch that's got a lot more under the bonnet. So more, more video, another video coming out very soon on that anyway. So thumbs up if you like this video. Thumbs down if you don't like this video. And remember, if you're a subscriber, hit that subscribe button that side. Get it all wrong now. And uh, see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.